So we have a, a lower leg injury, in this case a, a tibia fibula injury. We can check Jordan's CSMs. Uh, circulation, your foot feels pretty warm, Jordan? Yeah. Great, and can you close your eyes for me? Which toe is this? Uh, pinky arm. Great, and can you wiggle those toes? Since we have a lower leg injury, I don't need to do a lot of pushing and pulling on testing here. Uh, we've done all our inspection. We're ready to build a splint. I've taken, uh, in this case, an insulite pad. I've measured it out so that it extends about the same length as Jordan's foot past her heel. I'm going to fold the top part over so that it's just as long as her leg coming up towards the top of her femur. And I'm going to think about some padding in places where there are going to be curves. And this one will come underneath Jordan's knee so that it does not lock her knee in a straight position. I've got some padding that's going to come down around her lower leg to try to come around the curves of her calf and her ankle. I'd like this padding to be flat and not wrinkled so as to minimize any places where there might be hot spots or uneven pressure being exerted against her leg. In order to move all of my material underneath Jordan's leg, I need to be very deliberate about supporting the injury site, perhaps grabbing some extra help to slide our padding underneath. In this case, Jordan might be able to help me a little bit here as we slide all of this under her leg, trying not to cause any unnecessary or painful movement. I'm gonna take some uh, cravats to tie my splint into place and I'm going to think about taking advantage of ways to move my cravats up without having to manipulate my patient's leg. I can slide them up, get them to position. I'd like to have at least two securing points above Jordan's knee and if I had a patient with particularly long legs I might need three or more. I'm going to have at least two securing points beneath Jordan's knee, but I'm gonna try not to tie anything directly over her knee as that would probably be uncomfortable. And now I can start to secure my splint to create some of the rigidity that comes with compression. Jordan, would you mind putting your hand up here for me? When I tie my cravats over my patient, I'd like to make sure that any place the tie-off comes over tissue is nice and wide so that I don't do any localized tissue pressure that could cause some more injury. I can start off with a standard knot and if I wrap it around one more time, I've created a little extra friction in a surgeon's knot that can be pulled fairly snug. It's still adjustable. I can tie my bow so that as my patient needs the splint adjusted, during our evacuation, I can come back and do so. I'm gonna tie one more tie off down here right around Jordan's ankle. And so far, I've done a nice job of immobilizing Jordan's femur. I've set up my padding to extend past the sole of her foot. I'm gonna take all this padding, I'm gonna fold it up to create what amounts to a T shape. I'm gonna take the two wings of my T and fold them towards my patient's knee. And I can take one more tie off and use this to secure a little box wrap that creates some nice foot support. Any lower leg extremity can be secured in this fashion. I still can reach in and feel her toes. It feels pretty warm in there. Uh, Jordan, which toe am I squeezing right here? Uh, big toe. So I have good circulation sensation and can you wiggle those? We have some nice movement in there as well. We're going to deconstruct a few other options for a lower leg or a tib-fib splint. We've got jackets and scarves, all that are wide and able to provide good compression. Uh, what we have down here is a roll that's been tied off in an Ensolite pad so that can come up and create a little bit of a support underneath Kay's foot. And then on the inside, we've got a wool blanket that's been wrapped in a horseshoe shape. Uh, that comes all the way underneath Kay's foot, around her ankles, and all the way up to provide padding so that there's no movement inside the splint itself. Uh, in this case, we have a wool blanket that's been wrapped around Kay's leg. And for an outermost layer here, uh, we're using, in this case, a duffel bag. We've added a stick or a ski pole to provide a little bit of, of prefabricated rigidity in addition to the compression that we can apply. In this case, uh, in lieu of the Insulite pad, we have an inflatable thermarest that's been applied. Uh, the secret to making the thermarest work as your outermost layer is to put it on while it's deflated, have it tied into place uh, via the same systems we've been using so far. Uh, once it's all secured snugly, 
inflate it. And as you can see here, once we inflate it, it actually applies a more uniform compression throughout the length of the splint uh, and allows essentially an improvised air splint to be built.